it's got a bit of a hump to it. Oh, it, it works fine. Um, it's got a bit of a hump to it. I might just look at that height adjustment to it. So it's a little bit loose. So I might just tighten it up a smidge as well whilst we've got it on the bench. So let's get it inside and then we'll uh, take this carburetor off and see what's going on with it. So here it is. And this is the um, Honda Lawn Flight Pro 553 HWS. It does just have a very slight hunt to it, as you saw in the, in the, in the clip beforehand. And I would just like to try and get rid of it if I can. But I'm not quite sure if I can. But uh, it does sound like a bit of a fuel issue going on. So let's just have a little look to see what we can do with it. If, pof if possible. It could do with a service, that's for certain. So I'll blow the air filter out for now. I mean, it's it's all there. It's quite a substantial bit of kit this is really. Um, it's got your typical uh, bowl style carburetor. It's got a fuel on and off. So I'm gonna turn the fuel off for now and then get my, um, my clips. I'm just gonna clamp that fuel off back here on the tank. So that's dealt with. I need to get a Phillips screwdriver off of there and then all of this assembly then should just come away once I've undone the carburetor bolts. So let's grab a Phillips. So that should be undone. Again, I've not worked on one of these yet. Not proper, I've worked on a Honda HRX 476s, that sort of stuff. Undo that, let me grab a magnet tray, which I now have ample stocks off which is nice so that's now loose there there's not another screw up in there no so i'm hoping i don't have to take all this assembly off i'm hoping just to get away just undoing these two and then that should then slip out i may have to take the top off yet um let me grab my i can use a socket today because I've had problems with these before in the respect that um, I sheared one of these off, so I don't want to be doing it, it's a 10 mil. Take it nice and easy. There may not be a carburetor issue, but it, it certainly sounds like one. give me all of that or not? I'd rather take some more bits off. I'm hoping just to lift that up like so. Hopefully that will come away, which it does. Happy with that so far. No problems going to be the linkages. Got a nice little gasket there with a hole to the bottom left hand side. It's going to be stuck on there now it is. Oh, it's going to come. Now, will it give it me all of it or not? I don't think it will. I don't want to bend anything. So that one there, no, I might take the whole lot off. That's a shame. I was hoping to get, get around. We're not doing that. Hey ho. So what Phillips screwed over here at the top. I don't know if you're going to be getting that and put it up a touch. I want to record this because some people won't, won't have uh, seen one of these been done before, so. <clears throat> the Honda are quite easy, to be fair, with regards to taking the bits off. But most Hondas are fine all the time they're running. It's when they're not running, it's when they become a problem. A bit of, a, bit of an expensive issue. Phillips screwdriver on the top. That should then give you your cool core cover off. With just some little tiny silly clips, I dare say. Yeah, that goes through there and out. I'm going to put that, let's put it down on the floor. Uh, some 10 mils on there. One. Two. I don't want to do too much of this because this is, uh, at the moment, this is my, my lawn mower until I can get hold of the carburetor for that, that hater. 
That all comes off. Happy with that. Now, it's just gonna lift off those little more bolts to be, to be shown. That all lifts off. And that's a good thing with these, with these Hondas. It all comes off in one go. What a fantastic little design. I'm happy with that. So now we can now just twist this um, throttle linkage that pops up with the spring on the back. Now that would be a tipping method, this one. So it may give it to me once I take this fuel pipe off. This has got one of my favorite clamps on, which I detest. Uh, long nose. That's just like a bit of, bit of wire on there, if anything. It's not going to be doing a lot, so. I'm going to go careful, I don't want to split the wire. So I'm going to go behind the, behind the fuel pipe and try and tease it round. Might get a bit of leakage here because uh, there is some fuel between the pipe. But not a great deal because it is clamped off. So happy with that now. Give me all of that in one go. Not quite. I might take it off of this, off of this arm. There it goes. That now comes off. That goes back on the arm so I don't lose it. And then the carburetor then comes off in one movement. So that's cool. Let's take this over to the bench and we're taking it apart and have a look. Okay, so I've got the carburetor in place. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to do is just, just take this apart. Um, now you've seen me do lots of these before, the bowl style carburetors. Um, so it's nothing new, despite the fact I can't even undo it. My word, that's on. I'll try and some fuel out. Can't even get that undone. Oh my word, who put that on? Hulk Hogan? So I have to go in a vice. I don't recommend putting it in a vice, but I don't have a lot of choice. I want to bend the carburetor flat so it's closed. But I don't want to be bending that. This is off camera slightly. Just so I can get a, a better purchase on it. Just putting it in the vice just so I can undo these because they're on there. Got one doing, got one run. And the other one. That's better. Oh, tight. Tight, tight, tight. Okay. Just going to run these off. Now, I'm not expecting to see anything bad in here because it is running, but it's not running right. Let's have a look. It's not brilliant. The fuel does look a bit, a bit stale, if anything, but it's not filthy dirty. So I'm expecting it to be further down inside one of the um, inside one of the jets. That's what I'm looking at, I suppose. That all comes apart. Lovely and the float is fine. It's got a plastic needle on it. That looks good. And it's got a. Um, a main jet in there which I want to take out as well. Let me just grab my carburetor screwdriver, which I'm hoping will be that one. Nope, slightly smaller I'll say. Need to be a bit careful because these jets I don't like to come out. Let me try that one. Got it or not? Yeah, it has. It's just not running as well as I would like. There it goes. The tubes come out as well, which is good. I'm going into here as well, so I'm going to give it a quick spray of WD-40. I'll give it an air compress off once that's had time just to soak off. Now lots of people have commented why I don't use carburetor spray. I do use carburetor spray and I use it quite a bit. But I do favour um, WD-40 only because it's not as harsh. Now lots of carburetors I have, they're not too bad in the respect um, 
of being clean. So if they're absolutely shocking, I will put it through uh, uh, you know, carb clean um, with a carb cleaner. But if they're not too bad, then WD-40, in my opinion, is a way to go, only because I always back it up with my air compressor. If I didn't have an air compressor, then I wouldn't do it. Just want to clean this off now with, a, with my air gun. So I just want to divert my attention over here, which would be where my <coughs> um, jets are. Got my filing, filing system. I'll try the smallest file first, which would probably be that one. Because this is a very, very small hole in here. It doesn't look clogged. I can see daylight through it, but I just want to try and improve the amount if I can. It may just have a very, very slight amount of a blockage, which is not giving me enough to run through. Let's go up a step. I'm not lo looking to take any material off, just looking to see if I can just improve it. And that's already, it already looks 100% better. 100% better. The hole I had originally, you could just about see daylight through it. And now you can really see daylight through it. And I haven't taken no material off. Just literally improved it. So let me run some air through that. Two seconds. I don't want to drop it. If I drop it, I'll be on my hands and knees. I'm going to run a little bit of WD-40 spray through it. And back it up with the air gun again. Now I could only just about see daylight through that a minute ago. But now, if you can see that, I can now see daylight through it really plainly. So it, it was nowhere near as good as that. That goes over to one side on a clean bit of rag. <coughs> and then with the tube, the tube looks really good also. It doesn't look like it's blocked up at all. But again, just gonna get my files. Go for the smallest one first, because some of these holes are really, really tiny. Just want to run these files through. Again, not looking to take any material off, just looking just to improve the flow. But nothing obvious is coming to mind at the moment, apart from that jet I just cleaned a minute ago. Um, I can get in there. Just these holes are tiny. Just trying to increase the flow. So if, it, if there's any, you don't, you don't want a grain of sand in here, and it will block it up. Oh, can I get in there? Oh. Maybe that's, no, I might, that might have been blocked. So that's that way down. I'm going to turn it around now and go on this side. Really, really fiddly. What's that one there? That, that one looked blocked there while I'm in now. That looked a bit blocked. So now they look, they look so much better already. And again, I'm going to back that up with a bit of spray to wash out anything that might be in there. And then again, get my airline. <clears throat> and then run that through the airline as well. And as long as you're thorough, and this is maybe why some of my videos take a bit longer to do. I don't, I don't like to just say, you know, I'll get it clean and come back. I like to show people, but you can always fast forward, I suppose. So now that those holes, you can now see daylight through them, and they're crystal clear and clean. So that's good. So I'm happy with those two. The float itself doesn't need cleaning. You just want to double check there's no fuel in it. You can put it in some fluid to make sure it does float, but it doesn't look cracked in any way, shape, or form. There is a bit of dirt on the top here. So I'll give it a bit of a clean with some WD-40. 
bit of a wash and sit that over the side just to dry off. The bowl itself looks good. No pitting, there's a little bit of dirt in the bottom, not a great deal. So I'll just give it a bit of a clean out. I'm not overly concerned with that. There was a bit of dirt in there though. So I'm happy with that. You can take your pin out, that goes in the bowl, and your two bolts as well. Put it over to one side where the rest is all clean. Now we've got the rest of the carburetor, and all I want to do is just shoot some spray through, through all the holes. That should be coming out this side over here. There should be little tiny holes just here. You see little tiny pins? And that should go through there. Which it is. Oh. That's running. I've got a hole here. And then there's two little tiny needles on the side here I showed you. Where are they there? Straight into there. I can feel that blowing straight out of the back. Right, I think that carburetor is now clean. Got one more in there. So that's now done. I want to double check I've got my bits because my car a bit knocked over here. I've got my small jet, I've got my tube, two bolts, pin and my float kit. It's all there. Lovely. Didn't want to lose any bits. So airline into there. And back through. A general clean. That's that carburetor now cleaned. Get rid of the rag, that's dirty. Clean bit in. Happy, can I change my gloves? Quick slurp of my old coffee. Thank you, Chris. Right. <clears throat> Bring all the components back in. They've all been cleaned. Just double check before I go back in. Yeah, happy. That goes in that way. That's not the jet. The jet is down here. There it is. Make sure it's clean. Yeah. Yeah, that's clean. Check goes in. Do that up. Doesn't have to be really, really tight, just needs to be well seated. As I say, if you have seen me do this before, you can just fast forward onto the next video clip. That's that. Bring the float in, which is clean. No dirt on there. And that just sits in the hole. In there, get the pin, feed it through, and then you can just blow this, blow through here. No air, lift the float up, and you can hear the air going through, so that's working. So, this carburetor is going to go on this way, so I want to have the bowl on like that. So you can undo this little tiny bolt here at the front of the machine when you go to um, try and flood the, flood the carburetor if you're not getting fuel come through. So that now goes on. If I can get it started, it goes. They're very careful, don't ruin them threads. That goes on. 10 mil. Make that one up, and that one I just drop ever so loosely. Right, that's that carburetor now cleaned, and that's what come out of it. So there was some there was some gunk in there, not a great deal, but there was some in there. 
carburetor is now done let's take it back to the machine and we'll refit it okay so we're back on the machine it's right for some look look swing around look and out there look at them mrs p and nana out there chilling out in the sunshine there's me sweating in the shed and them two are out there on holiday you can tell riley's not about otherwise we'll, we'll be all be paying for it right so the carburetor's wrapped up in in a cloth to keep it nice and as clear as we can get it so the carburetor can now come back in it goes around that way so the first thing i want to do is hook up this this little tiny kitty first put that onto the onto the pins Bump. bring it forward and just encourage that into its place which would be I might be able to do it like that it's a bit fiddly it doesn't quite give enough room but I don't want to bend anything that's that one no, well, it's got to go on first there it goes that now feeds on I can now put the fuel on whilst I'm here that's a fuel on and now put my two springs on oh two clips one here which goes on the front there and then that spring goes on the back <laughs> oh. there. that goes into place uh, magnet tray so I've got this little tiny metal clip which goes on that way hold to the bottom left good uh, what else we've got a couple of bolts there that's that uh, long one that's it yeah it's fine we can now bring the top down into its desired place which is going to be somewhere there i've got this assembly to go on and then that will sit on that there's like an o-ring up here which that's all got to sit in together and press into place that's gone down that's lovely happy with that <clears throat> i can then bring in my pull cord so just want to check the condition on that i might even replace that pull cord whilst i'm here because it's not very long yeah and it's a bit frayed so i'm just going to do this pull cord very very quickly right i had to just change the pull cord very quickly on that because um it was frayed when i, looked, when I inspected it it was frayed so i put a, another lump of pull cord on very very quickly I don't suppose you want me to see how to do a pull cord on one of these, they're very simple. There's millions of videos out there. However, if you do, give me a shout and I'll do one. But Let's just nick them up. Make sure that retracts. Yeah, it does. Happy with that. Uh, do that up slightly that one that one that one and just test again yeah uh, I want my cover which goes through there and it just sits on some little clips and one clip clips three clips that's all in so happy with that slurp of your coffee cool right um, I can now unclamp the fuel I can turn the fuel on which I think is towards me that way I can test for leaks whilst I'm just finishing up I'll fire my air compressor up and give this filter a bit of a bit of a blow off because uh, it's not quite right. Because two ticks, I'll do that. I'm gonna have to watch that little Riley boy. He's turned my compressor right up to, to maximum, so that can be a bit of a disaster. I'll have to keep an eye on that. He's uh, it's up to 95 psi, and I thought that's taking a little while to to blow up, and uh, it whacked up the full belt. So he's a little pickle, isn't he? Um, 
Airfoil has been cleaned off now, happy with that. Just want to bring in the box that covers the top. Well, first of all, actually, before I go any further, I suppose I'd better put the two nuts on here that hold the car better in place. Do them up. You're getting that, you're not, are you? Sorry. Do them up. So probably working su such a close proximity. People want people want close-ups of what you're doing, but you because you move about a bit, you forget to move the camera. I'll try to cater for everyone. Not too tight. You don't want to strip these threads off. Which is something I have done before. And on a big engine like that, you don't want to waste this. So that's up nice and tight. We've got a Phillips to put in down here. A little tiny retained bolt with a Phillips driver. I'm not seeing no fuel leaks at the minute, so that's good. That sits down. I want to grab a 10 mil spanner. I just want to crack this carburetor off on the overflow like I told you down the bottom here just so I can get some fuel down which I have now got fuel so that carburetor is now full and crack that back up without upsetting anything that whole bowl moved then so I just want to do that up make sure that's not tighter and that's one reason why I don't use carburetor spray because it does it does do in those little tiny o-rings right no leaks there let's have a wipe off just to make sure that's good uh, the cover can now come back in i've got one screw left which would be the screw for the flap up the top that goes back into place somewhere there they screw down so i may not have cured this but it's just a peace of mind really I think it does work though. It's all it can be. It can't be anything else. It's definitely not an electrical sort of surging. Right, that's that. I want this one screw to go in up here, which holds the um, cover in place. Now, before I put it on the deck, I just want to tip it up on its side slightly. Just want to double check that that height adjustment is in place. Just a 30 mil bolt goes through the axle. Oh no, it was captive, wasn't it? It was captive, that's right. So that's a 13 mil on there. Which should loosen that off. It was captive because it was a different setup, wasn't it? That comes off. And then the wheel should then come off. That's it. Don't be lazy, Mick. And literally it's just a play there it's a little bit of play so let me just tip it up on its side a smidge oh it's heavy heavy old girl it is heavy and then there's a little tiny bolt under here a little tiny nut all i'm going to do is put this 13 mil on the inside which is there and this 13 mil on this side and there so it was a bit loose, but my fear is if I do it up too tight, will I not be able to adjust it? Oh no, I can. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's it. Quick little fix, that's all it was. I, just, I was a bit concerned it was getting a bit loose. This mower barely fits on my table. I see one of my subscribers, he emailed me yesterday. Um, he picked up a new table hoist actually and uh, he's super impressed with it, saving his back. It does make all the difference. So if you don't have a table hoist and you do quite a bit of this sort of repairing stuff, I highly, highly recommend getting one. They're about two and a half to 300 pound for half sensible. You can buy them second hand, but it just saves your back. None of that lifting. And this, this lawnmower is heavy, 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 heavy. And you don't want to pull your back out. Don't do an injury trying to earn money. 
because it ain't worth it. That can now get nicked up. And that's a captive nut, it's all alley, so I don't want to go mad and don't want to snap it. That's fine. Right, that now, yeah, that's working better actually. It's a lot stiffer, I won't need to be. What height settings are on? That's one, two back, two back, that's it. Yeah, that's no, there's no plan that at all now. Happy. Okay, so that's all now done. Fuel, I think, is turned on. Can't quite see from up here. I'm assuming that way's on. And then uh, let's get on the floor, get it outside, and we'll go for a fire up. Right, so she's off the old table. I haven't tried to fire it up at all. Uh, but let's give it a go, shall we? Um, so we're looking for it to stop hunting. That's the idea, but uh, it may not. We may not have cured it. I don't think we have. Someone's telling me we haven't cured it. But we shall see. So choke's on. Yeah, little faith in myself. Yeah, she's fixed. So as you saw, I had no faith in myself at the time. I had a feeling it wasn't going to happen, but um, I think I know what the problem was. And it was purely just the little tiny jet that sits on top of a tube. I could see daylight through it, but when I push my little tiny files through, wherever they may be, here they are, this little tiny file set. And it just literally, it doesn't take any material off, so to speak. Um, we have, they have got teeth on them, but they're, they're not really a file, so to speak, but, but they do clean very well. And I think it nearly doubled the amount of um, gap in between there. Um, it wasn't drilled out, it's just literally just cleaned po properly. And I think pretty much that was all it was. And it now has stopped that machine hunting full stop. So I am actually super impressed now. Um, it also had a new pull cord put on it, and the air filter was cleaned out as well, so that, that'll help. It does want a new spark plug put in at some point. Um, but now I'm, I can be now reassured that I can go out and that machine's running as it should do. So that's cool. So I think the moral of the story is, is I need to have a bit more faith in myself. Sometimes I just think, mm, do you know what? It's, it was running fine. And what happens if it, what happens if it doesn't run when it, can't, when it goes to finish? But as I always say, on mixed mowers, no frills. It is what it is. Had that lawnmower not started, it would have been back in, on the bench and back in bits to investigate. But... There you go, she's running absolutely sweet as a nut. So the only one thing I need to look at on that mower now is two things. It does tend to blow a lot of grass out the back of the box through the flap. It's not quite sitting down home as much as I would like it to. That's niggly. And the second thing is, is the it's got two speed adjustment um, on it. The number two is lovely, uh, nice and quick, but number one doesn't quite work as well as perhaps I think it should. If you start it off in number one, it doesn't like to go. Put it in number two and go down about 15 yards, then put it into one and it will go slower. Um, so I think it's just a bit of a cable adjustment needs needs taken up on that. That's all I think it is. Um, but that's not bad considering that little lawnmower was done a straight swap for a Mountfield 47 something. Um, just a, a, a general B&Q hobby lawnmower. That's all I swapped it for. And that lawnmower is now mine, personal use, until... I can get that carburetor sorted out for that hot that Hater 48 Pro because I would like to get that Hater back up and running very, very soon. Um, so anyway, another fantastic little fix and I'm super chuffed. So thank you very much for joining me on this um, episode. Of Don't Mouse. forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, also to whack the bell. That'll give you a notification to say I've released another video. And also, more importantly, 
YouTube community sticky comments down below, positive or negative, I don't really mind. And a big shout out goes to the Small Engine Nation, which is across the world of girls and guys that do everything involving petrol or little diesel engines. If you just tap into the search bar on YouTube, hashtag Small Engine Nation, there's a plethora of stuff on there which might interest some of you. So thank you very much, and until next time, take it easy. Do you feel the